Yes, AIDS may be powerful, may be scary, but at the name of Jesus, when you open your mouth and say, Jesus, at that very second, if AIDS had knees, it would go down like this. <laughs> Completely submit. If it had a mouth, it will open its mouth and say, Jesus is the master. I am not. I'll go. Here is love, vast as the ocean, loving kindness as the flood. When the prince of life our ransom shed for us, his precious blood who is love will not remember who can cease to sing his praise he can never be forgotten throughout heaven's eternal days who is love who is love will not We can never be forgotten Throughout heaven's eternal day On the mount of crucifixion Fountains open deep and wide the floodgates of God's mercy Float on us and gracious sky Grace and love like mighty rivers Poured in sand from above And heaven's peace and perfect justice Kissed a guilty world Grace and love, grace and love, like mighty river, poured in sets in front of us, and heaven's peace and perfect justice, just a guilty world in love. Truth, you do direct me by you. Through your word and your grace, my need is meeting as I trust in you, my Lord. Of your fullness, you are pouring your great love in power on me without measure, full and boundless. Sing that again. Of your fullness, you are pouring your great love and power on me without measure, full and boundless, drawing out my heart. Grace and love, grace and love, like my. See one last time. Grace and love like mighty rivers poured in sands and from above and heaven's peace and perfect justice kissed a guilty world in love and heaven's peace and perfect justice. Kissed a guilty world in love. Today, you know, some, sometimes preachers will say, well, this is a small demon. This is a big demon. They classify the demons, right? 
And so they say, since it's a big demon, I may need time to prepare, right? So I'll go fast and pray or maybe do an all-night prayer and really, you know, come prepared to drive out this big demon. Right? Or there, maybe there's a thousand demons put together in the person, right? What if, did Jesus say that? Well, this is a big demon. Let me go and, you know, do some fasting and prayer and I'll come back. Did he say that? I need some time to prepare. I'm sorry. No, he never said that, my friend. It didn't matter to me whether small demon, big demon, one demon, thousand demon. Doesn't matter. One word, it goes. Why? He had authority. Absolute authority. He had authority over death itself. Lazarus died. His body was in the tomb for four days. His body was stinking, literally. The decaying process had begun, right? And from that, you would think, you know, this requires some extra effort from Jesus. No extra effort. Lazarus, come forth. That's all. And he just simply, what does it show? His absolute authority over everything in his earthly life, right? So we saw his authority before his earthly life, in his, when he was the son of God in eternity past. And then we saw his authority on earth when he was doing his earthly ministry. Well, what about his authority today? Jesus died and rose again, and then he ascended to the heavens, and then the Bible says he was exalted to the right hand of God. Today, where is Jesus? He's sitting at the right hand of God. How much authority does he have today? 1 Peter 3.22. Why are we looking at all this? Why is all this necessary? Is it really necessary to go and see how much? Well, it is. This is only getting into it deeply and not superficially. Yes, Jesus has authority, just say, you know, knowing that at one level that's okay, you see. But if you really want to use the name of Jesus with confidence, you need to go into it deeply, you need to be convinced about these things, right? 1 Peter 3, 22. Where is Jesus today? How much authority does he have? Previous verse ends with, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers having been made subject to him. So where is Jesus today? He's at the right hand of God. What all is under him? Angels. Right? It says angels, it means all angels. And then it says authorities. It means all authorities. And powers, it means all powers. He is at the top. That's what he's trying to say. There's nobody... Higher than him, go to another verse, Ephesians chapter 1, 20. Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above. Look at this, you can see his authority very well here. Verse 21, far above all principality and power and might and dominion. Notice those words, principality, power, might, all those words are referring to other authorities. Even in this world, when you look, you know, consider this world, there are a lot of powerful people in this world, right? They seem to have a lot of powers, a lot of money, a lot of influence, right? They seem to get things done, right? Some big names are out there. Well, my friend, the biggest names you can think of, <laughs> including the devil himself, is included in this list here. Jesus is far above all principality, power, might, dominion, and then look how it says, Every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. Did Paul miss anybody? Eh. Verse 22, and he put all, notice how he said, all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Why is this important? I'm trying to say Jesus is right at the top. <laughs> how much authority does Jesus the person have? Nobody has more authority than him. What does that mean? If he says something, everything needs to obey. Right? So how much authority does the name of Jesus have? That means. Same. Yeah. Go to one more uh, passage. Important passage. Philippians chapter 2. Verse 9 to 11. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. Now why this passage is important is, why I'm dealing with this is, it brings in everything that we've been talking about. We're talking about the name of Jesus, how the name of Jesus has power and authority. And we said the name of Jesus has as much power and authority as Jesus himself. In this passage, what Paul does is he brings in these two concepts, that is Jesus the person and the name. Both these concepts, he brings it in together and he talks about them. 
therefore god has also highly exalted him who is he talking about he's talking about jesus right he's exalted the person jesus my right hand is the person jesus right therefore god has also highly exalted jesus the person and then now watch he brings in the name of jesus given him the name which is above every name and then now from here on out he's going to stress the name verse 10 that at the name of jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven of those on earth of those under the earth that every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father so notice first jesus the person is talked about what is it in verse 9 it says god has elevated jesus above every other person above every other thing and then immediately it says he has given him the name which is above every other name to the same level that he elevates jesus he also elevates his name nothing less right same level not only that look how it describes this uh, elevation or look how it describes jesus's authority every knee will bow every tongue will confess what will they confess jesus is lord but we christians believers today itself our knees are bowing and our tongue is confessing that jesus i've heard it said like that also but there's a lot more to this passage that's what i want to try to show you you see there is a great emphasis on the name i already showed you the emphasis on the name right the, it, in fact paul emphasizes the name more than the person right here in 9 to 11 now look how he describes the authority of jesus and his name every knee will bow what does that mean that means knee will bow means not just this it means you go down on your knees that's what it means okay at least something like this what does that mean that symbolizes what that you're submitting right you've seen people bow right before higher authorities some people will bow like this in school you know and the teacher used to pass by they told us you should wish him and uh, slightly bow the head so we'll do it just we won't really mean it you know we we'll just go like you know like that you know so there's that and then the next step is like you know they do it i think in japan or some you know like they go like this right so that's and then some people will go more right but this is more this is every knee will i mean go all the way on your knees like this okay and i want to show i'm trying to show how paul says it every knee will bow every tongue will confess what will they confess that jesus christ is lord now we've taken that confession to be a, some religious thing right jesus christ is lord right we use lord 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 but what does lord really mean you know how we use lord sometimes you think you're a big lord what does that mean lord means master right master the, the, the idea there is there's a master there's a slave master that type of authority right it's not some ordinary thing you see so every tongue will con- they everybody will go like this it seems they go like this and they'll open their mouth and say i am not the master jesus is the master right there that's how paul is describing it very picturesque right very vivid language right vivid now that doesn't mean paul is saying only those with knees and tongues will submit to jesus authority is that what paul is saying no he's just describing it in vivid language right does the devil let me ask you this does the devil have a knee or a tongue right no the devil came as a serpent in the garden of eden he's taken other forms he's actually a spirit only right just like god is a spirit the devil also is a spirit being so paul is not trying to say only those with knees and tongues will bow to jesus is authority no he's not trying to say that he's saying everybody will bow look at the emphasis on all again once again in this passage god has also highly exalted him given him the name which is above every name notice every again verse 10 at the name of jesus every knee should bow of those in and look where these knees and these tongues are if you will where are these all people right paul is referring to all people all things all everything will bow to jesus that's what he's trying to say everything where he says in heaven on earth and under the earth has he left out anything see paul is emphasizing that all so much he's saying in heaven in earth is there anything outside of these three things nothing if he was living today i think paul would have said in the milky way galaxy in the other galaxies in the galaxies they have not found yet everywhere anywhere everything everywhere will bow to the name of jesus amen did you see how he said that to verse 10 that at the name of jesus did you see that expression at 
the name. What does that mean? That means the moment the name of Jesus is uttered. Jesus! That means what? Everything will bow and will open their mouth and say, Jesus is the master, I am not the master. Right? Verse 11. That every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the God the Father. Okay, finally I want to look at this. The name which is above every name. The name which is, God has given him the name which is above every name. Because the name is only emphasized here. Right? What does that mean? Name above every name. Why is Paul emphasizing name so much? What does that mean, name above every name? Well, think about names once again, generally. Everything has a name. Everything has a, every entity has a name. Let me, you have a name. I have a name. The person sitting next to you has a name. All the people in this room have names. The thing that you are sitting on has a name. Does it not? We call it something, right? Chair. This has a name. This has a name. This has a name. Look around you and see if you can find anything without a name. Maybe you don't know the name. But everything has a name. Even the animals have names. Even small insects have names. Right? In fact, you know, today they're still finding out certain animals and uh, insects and uh, even fish and so on. Right? They've never seen, they've, nev they, they've never known that such a fish existed before. But now they find it. What do they do as soon as they discover it? They give it a name. Why? If something exists, it has to have a name. That's why Paul is bringing in the idea of names. He's trying to make a point here. Everything has a name. Now let's come to our life. Your problem has a name, does it not? If you don't know the name, ask your doctor. They have names for everything you see. Small and great. Your sickness has a name. Is that included in this list? I think so. Why? All, all, in heaven, in earth, in under the earth, everything, every name, every, not just things with knees and tongues, like I said, right? Everything, your problem, your sickness, some sickness, you know, this fever, fever is a, it's a, it's a sort of, right? not a very scary word, right? Fever can be solved, you can go to the doctor, whatever. Well, what about cancer? Now, that's a little more scary, right? Final stage cancer, even more scary. Everything has a, AIDS, that's a powerful name. Some people are getting squirmish, you know, even as I said it, right? Why is he saying the name? We're in church, you know, we're in holy ground here. Right? It makes people feel uneasy, right? That's a bad thing, you know, whatever. AIDS is a pretty powerful name, right? Paul is saying everything has a name. Some are more powerful than others, but I am talking about one other name. <laughs> And this name, every, this is above every name. That means there is one name which is above the name of AIDS, my friend. Amen. That is what Paul is trying to say. What does that mean? Yes, AIDS may be powerful, may be scary, but at the name of Jesus, when you open your mouth and say, Jesus, at that very second, if AIDS had knees, it would go down like this, Completely submit. If it had a mouth, it will open its mouth and say, Jesus is the master. I am not. I will go. Are you there? This is some powerful stuff. This is not just a verse you sing about and use an exhortation. No, no. This is, if you look into it, it's like gold coming out, you know, diamonds, right, hidden there. What is he trying to say? Jesus' name is above everything else. At the name of Jesus, you just open your mouth and say it. Everything has to bow. It can't say, well, I'll just bow slightly, you know, or like this. No, no, it has to go all the way down, submit completely to the name of Jesus. What am I trying to say, my friend? I'm trying to say, use it. Use what? Use the name of Jesus. That's all. That's all we're trying to say. We're trying to convince you. We're trying to provoke you, push you, use it. It'll work. It'll bring you victory and it'll bring you success if you use it. You know, I was teaching this in our Bible college. I taught the subject of the name of Jesus. And uh, one student, you know, now our campus looks very crowded, right? Our compound. But if you come during the weekdays, it's very empty. It's very nice, actually, outside. For a change, you can see the sky in the city of Chennai, you know. 
and uh, the students are out here. We have some Bible college students here, and they're out here praying and reading the Bible. And uh, one student came and told me the story. You know, he said after all the other students went back to sleep, uh, he continued to pray and then was thinking about the name of Jesus that we are teaching in class. And uh, he said, "I wanted to use it. I've never before used it. You know, I knew it had power, but I never really. I have seen other people use it, but I wanted to use it. You're saying it'll work if you use it." And so he says he opened his eyes and he said he just looked up and said, "I want to use it." And he saw a cat. It seems he was standing there. He says he came and told me. You see, the next day. And he saw a cat that was walking across this wall. And he said, "Well, there's a cat. Let me try using it." And he said, "In the name of Jesus, you cat, you come here." And he says the cat was walking like this. He was like this, and the cat turned and got down from the wall and walked right up to him. Okay, this is what, this is what he told me, right? And then he said, "Well, this is amazing. You know, this is I've never seen this happen." And so he said, well, let me try it again. He said, cat, you, after it came here, he said, turn around, go back. He says, the cat turned around and went back to the wall, got back up on it, continued its journey. <laughs> Now, the thing that you should appreciate about the student is he used it, used the, that much I appreciate. Why? Because not many people are not, you're not at all using it. Right? So the good thing about that student that day is he used it. The bad thing is he used it on a <laughs> The name of Jesus is not given to us to just use upon a cat like this I I I think he will go on and to use it in other things right I'm not trying to I'm just giving an example right Forget your cat my friend There are big fat problems standing before you you know That is There are much bigger problems than cats that we face every day in our lives there are much more opportunities we get where we can use the name you don't have to go searching for a cat totally unnecessary right every day you have problems coming at your doorstep <laughs> challenges small problems big problems sin is a problem sickness is a problem poverty is a problem all kinds of problems your own mind is a problem sometimes Speak open your mouth and say in the name of Jesus you will obey now And actually you don't even have to shout really you know <laughs> I should not give the wrong impression by shouting that if you shout it will work no no just say it softly also it will work why just say the name of Jesus it will use it my friend God has made victory very easy <laughs> He's saying, if you can't do anything else, at least open my mouth, open your mouth, and say my name. Is that too hard? You know, say my name, experience the victory. My name gets the glory. You don't get the glory. His name gets the glory. There is no rock. There is no god like our God. No other name worthy of all our praise. The rock of salvation that cannot be moved has proven itself to be faithful and true. There is no rock, there is no God like God. There is no rock, there is no rock, there is no God like our God. No other name. Worthy of all our praise The rock of salvation cannot be moved He's proven himself to be faithful and true There is no rock, there is no God like ours Rock of ages, rock of ages Jesus is our rock, rock of ages
brought the salvation that cannot be moved. He's proven himself to be faithful to. There is no rock, there is no God like a rock of ages. Rock of ages. Jesus is our rock. Rock of ages. Jesus is our rock. Rock of ages. No rock, there is no God like God. Sing rock of ages, rock of ages. Jesus is our rock, rock of ages. Jesus is our rock, rock of ages. Jesus is our rock. There is no rock. There is no God like God. There is no rock. There is no rock. There is no God like God. Lift up your praise to the rock of ages. Jesus, our rock. Let's sing Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages. Jesus is our rock. Rock of Ages. Jesus is our rock. Rock of Ages. Jesus is our rock. There is no rock, there is no God like God Rock of ages, rock of ages Jesus is our rock, rock of ages Jesus is our rock, 